the scriptures, but I'm going to go fast because that man's taught me brevity. Not that man, that one man. Anyway, <laughs> he's taught me brevity, how to, um, how to uh, not make things last too long. I remember one time I, I got one of my teachings, and I don't like to hear myself teach, but I got one of my teachings, and I talked for an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. And I repeated myself over and over again. And I won't do that. I remember one time I looked at one of my sermons, and it was an hour. What? <laughs> okay, I'm kidding you. Uh, Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. Uh, Pastor Steve asked me two Sundays ago to minister for him on Wednesday night. I went home, and usually my, my sermons are, are all uh, slow cooker sermons. I get a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here, and then finally I get it done. But this here was done in about an hour, maybe hour and a half. It's called Stay With The Word. And I'm going to tell you probably a couple shocking things, but please listen to me. I got word for it. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of, of the Lord and set me in the midst of the valley and it is full of dry bones. Of course, we, we, we know this one here. And he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were, they were very dry. So they've been sitting there for quite a while. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord, you know. And again, he said, prophesy to these bones. And say to them, okay, now remember, God's telling him what to say, okay? Prophesy to these bones and say, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinew on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, put breath in you, and you shall live, and then, shall, then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied. And as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, to, uh, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered over them, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath, spirit, okay? Prophesy, son of man, to the breath. Thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, breathe on these slain, and they will live. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, and was exceedingly large, a great army. The thing I want to bring out here is uh, verse 4 and 6. It said, prophesy to these bones, so the Lord told him what to say. You see in for, verse 5, and so then he, he said, put breath in them, but... Now, verse 6, he said, he put sinew on them. Then he said, uh, oh, hang on here. Hang on. I'm, I'm trying to find where we're uh, Okay, no, no, 7. Okay, 7. Okay, anyway, this is the word I'm supposed to speak. 7. Now, 7 says, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I, as I prophesied. He didn't get through prophesying. When he got, got a hold of God's word and spoke it, as soon as he started speaking it, things started to happen. It happened as God told him to speak it. Okay, while not after he he was through prophesying, he just started prophesying. God's word is so powerful. You start prophesying, things start happening. Of course, when he got through prophesying, there's a great army, full of breath or spirit in them. That body can't live if that spirit leaves. And so it happened as as God told him to speak it. So st stay by the word. He spoke exactly what God told him to speak. Amen. You see that? Amen. Genesis 1. I said I'll go through here pretty quick. Genesis 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Oh, now, how did that happen? 
Because God did what we do. When he tells us to say something, we speak it out. And there was light. And God saw that light was good. And, the, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And in the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So we see our example, God speaking. You know, the Bible says he sings over us. Hmm, I wonder what he's singing over us. You think he's speaking over us? Is he singing over us? Nah. Acts chapter 2. Like I said, I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Here's a scripture we'll be very familiar with. I did this here so I can get to them quickly. Acts chapter 2. Now, we know about what happened in Acts chapter 2. Okay, the Holy Spirit fell. But I'm going to start with verse 14. But Peter, now he'd been kind of an unlucky guy. He's the one that denied the Lord. Three times, in fact. But Peter, standing up um, with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all, uh, all who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known unto you, and heed my, 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 my words. You hear that? For those are not drunk as you suppose. They were drunk. They were drunk, but not as you suppose. Since it was only the third hour of the day. But this was spoken by the prophet Joel. Gee, I wonder who gave Joel what to say. And he, I came to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my maidservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Make sure I don't go too far here. Okay. This is what he spoke. And the sun, okay, uh, prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and the signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood. Before the coming of the great and awesome day, day of the Lord. And it, it shall come to pass that whosoever, now that's all of us, yes. shall call them more than any of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. He just quoted Joel. Yes. Did he not? Yes. I have in front of my Bible here, this says Old Testament. I have a hard time calling it the Old Testament. We named it the Old Testament, by the way. I have to call it the former Testament. That's what I call it. You can call it Old Testament. And I guess I'll still call it Old Testament. To me, this is so relevant. If you ever hear Josh preach, he preaches a lot out of the Old Testament. You know why? Because it's relevant for us today. Man, there's lessons in here. And so I, before I just I was a New Testament guy, and I still am, New Testament guy. But you go back to the Old Testament, you go, wow, that's inspired. In fact, to show you how, how much it was inspired. Uh, verse 25. And for David said concerning it, here he goes again. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh shall also rest in hope, for you will not leave his soul in hell, or Hades, it says here, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. See, that's prophetic of Jesus, of course. And, and made known to me the ways of life, and you have made me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me free, speak uh, freely to you on the patriarch David, that he both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God was, was sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ. Now, we're talking about Old Testament here, right? That his soul would not be left in Hades, nor would his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, of which you are witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right on the right hand of God, and having received uh, from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but said himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand till I make your enemies the footstool. Therefore, let all of the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, when they heard what? 
Do they hear do they hear Peter's speech? No. What did they hear? Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. The word of God will cut to the heart. This is exactly what Peter was preaching. The word of the living God. You see how powerful this is? They were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Attend full gospel evangelistic center because that's the best church in Lincoln. No, no, that's not what it says. Whoa, I'm ex that's extra scripture here. He said, re re Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of G Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and your children and to all who are far off, that's me, that's me, and as many as the Lord of God will call. And many other wonder words he testified, exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So, so far, we have no New Testament being preached here. And we get people saved, 5,000, 3,000, all over again. What's going on here? This former testament, this old testament, is saving these people. Hmm. Now, 41 through 43. And then those gladly received the word, were baptized. That day were about 3,000 souls added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking the bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. I wonder how that happened. Because they were talking the word. The word. Old Testament. Former Testament word. Acts chapter 8. Same thing. I'm, I'm bringing, some, you probably grabbed this, I'm, I'm bringing something out here. 26, 826. Now the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. We know this story too. Arise and go toward, south, toward the south along, uh, along the road which goes down to Jerusalem to Gaza. Actually it says Gaza there, but anyway. Uh, well, that is desert. And he rose and went. See, he's listening to what God said. God said do that. Okay. He rose and went and behold a man from Ethiopia, a eunuch, of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all her treasury. In other words, he was her treasurer, her budget guy, and had come to Jerusalem to worship. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Now, not very many people had a hold of the word of God. Not very many people. This guy had some influence because he had Isaiah, the, the book of Isaiah, or at least part of the book of Isaiah. Let me put that way. Now, see, i, I got to get, get here. Okay, there we go. And was returning and sitting in his chariot, was reading the Isaiah, the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake the chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, well, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he was reading was, he, is, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before his shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. The reason why Jesus didn't open his mouth, everything he said came to pass. Can you imagine? Mm. I mean, there's some, he could have said some things like, it would just totally, it, it would have, it would have totally, I mean, like I said, he, he, when, when he was being tried, he kept his mouth shut. He knew to keep his mouth shut because his words are spirit and life. And he said, how can I understand unless someone guides me? And he, he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture was, where they read, he was a sheep to the slaughter as a, as a lamb before his shear was silent, so he opened up and out of his mouth. And in his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation for his life was taken from the earth? So the eunuch asked Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does this prophet say this? Of himself or of another man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at this scripture. Okay, we're at the same thing again. He's preaching from the Old Testament, the, the, the book of Isaiah. And he preached to him Jesus. How do you preach Jesus out of the Old Testament? Where does Jesus, where does it say Jesus in the Old Testament? You ever thought of that? It doesn't, does it? 
But a man who, right down the line, yes, yep, 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 right down the line, wow, this has got to be the guy. But I'll get to that a little bit later here. Then, like I said, Philip opened up his mouth and began to, as his scripture and preached Jesus to him. Now, as he went down the road, they came to some water. A eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Now, see, somehow, he was apparently saying, here's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Here, this is that Jesus we're talking about. But here's what happened the day of Pentecost when people were baptized, because Jesus said for them to be baptized. But again, all he's got the Old Testament. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is that rock, by the way, that the church is founded on. The rock. Not a rock, but the rock. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and, and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now, when he had come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotis, which passes through, I don't remember how many miles it is, but it's a long ways. It's called, uh, wow. You talk about rapture. You don't believe in the rapture. Well, anyway, in all the cities until he came to Caesarea. But you see here, Peter preached the Old Testament about Jesus. Mm. Okay. Hebrews chapter 4. Let's see what that's number 3. Hebrews chapter 4. Now we're going to be getting into the meat of this. And we know the scripture too. Sure enough, we've been in the faith for a while. Hebrews chapter 4. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit. We have a hard time distinguishing. Okay, your soul and spirit. We know the separate, but boy, it's hard to... But the, but but the but the word of God does that, and the discerner uh, and the soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, and is discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. For there is no creature hidden from, is that up there, his, his. They're not talking about a his here. They're talking about the word of God. Whoa, where do they get his from? Anybody know? The Word of God. Who's called the Word of God? Jesus. And nothing, that I, boy, this was just jumped out at me. Nothing hidden from his sight, but all things are naked to the eyes of uh, him to whom we have to give account. Uh, I want to make sure. Nope, that's all I got here on that. And so when you get out, from under the word of God, you lose your moral compass. See, he is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. I know somebody right now, I'm getting ready to speak to them. They're not going to like it. I don't like it. But once you get out from underneath the church, underneath the word, out from underneath the word of God, because see, it's my covering. I'm not under being crushed. I'm under the word of God. I'm under the, the pastoral leadership of Pastor Steve Owens. I, I'm, I'm under the, 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 the leadership of this church, but I'm covered. And so anytime you get out from beneath that, you start losing your moral compass. Because this is what tells me what I'm doing. Am I doing wrong, doing I'm right? How do I know? Right here. And I stay with this. God's put such a conviction on me to stay with this. This is the word of the living God. It's spirit and life. So when you get out from beneath the word, you get your, your uh, moral compass. And I've got 13. On 13 it says his. His obviously is Jesus. Now, like I said, I go through this pretty fast. I'm, I don't have to, uh, Josh, should I keep repeating myself so I can take a little more, more time? Oh, here we go. No, okay, you already know the answer to that. Okay. Um, for, First Corinthians one seventeen. For Christ did not send me to baptize, okay, but maybe God sent other people to baptize. You'll notice that after the word had been received, I think it was, um, there was two disciples that were sent that they might receive the Holy Ghost. I, I forget what, it's, it's an act somewhere. I don't remember who they were. Were they John and 
James and John, I don't know who it was, but they, they went and they prayed for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Well, the guy who was preaching to them, why didn't he do that? He's preaching the word. But you'll find there's some people who are more effective in certain areas. And so after they received the word, they sent to them, Peter, John, I don't remember who it was, and, and then, uh, they might receive the Holy Spirit. But for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom, wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made to no effect. Now, the Apostle Paul had been there at Greece. And what are the Grecians known for? Wisdom. They sought wisdom. Of course, it's perverted wisdom. It's, they had gods. They had, I mean, they, but they, they were seeking for wisdom. So the Apostle Paul went to, one time and preached to them, thought, I'm going to preach to them the wisdom of Christ. And what happened is, it didn't work. I'm not sure why. First Corinthians chapter two. And brother, I came to you. Uh, I did not come to you in excellence of speech or wisdom or declaring you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's the gospel. That's the word. People who are real high on wisdom, which is nothing wrong with wisdom. The wisdom of God is, or the foolishness of God is, is wiser than the wisdom of men. So it's the word. Again, stay by the word. The word. It's always the word. It's always the word. In fact, I uh, heard a preacher say one time he was called to talk to this guy. He said, hey, my uncle's lost. He really needs Jesus. He said, would you talk to him? He said, yeah, yeah, I'll talk to him. So he said, uh, so anyway, he got ready to talk to the guy, and he said, uh, you know, the Bible says if you'll can." If you believe with your heart and confess, if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he goes, oh, I gotta go. The guy took off. So this preacher said, Oh, I lost it. I lost this one. But what did I just quote there? Is that in the scriptures? Is that in the Bible somewhere? Like Romans chapter 10? So what is that there? I just quoted. Or part of the word. This word worked on this guy, and he said, oh, he said, this is just bugging me. What is, what is this? So he went into the scriptures. He finally looked it up. He kind of checked it out, and then he saw there, if any man confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, you know, that he would be saved to the glory of God. And he went, oh, and the guy got saved. A little bit of word with spirit and life wrapped up in it saved this guy. Didn't even quote a full scripture, but God's word is so effective. You just quote a little bit and they shut you off. You go, Lord, whatever I spoke, I believe. And what's what happens? I talk to people and they shut me off. I say, now, Lord, I believe whatever I spoke and you're going to just haunt them, or what, but you're going to remind them of this. And this guy got saved from that. Uh, so anyway, Paul was preaching to Greeks and they are heavy into wisdom. Now, Let's go to John. You probably figure I'm going to end up here. John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, I'm going to read from 1 to 11. Therefore, when the, when the Lord... Oh, am I there? Oh, Matthew. Try this again. Matthew 4. Okay, if you're in the wrong book, you get the wrong reading. Okay. And when Jesus was led into the spirit, into the wilderness, to be, te to be tempted with the devil. Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Or by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was hungered, now, when the tempter came and said, hmm, you're almost at the point of starvation. I got you at your lowest point. Got you at your lowest point. He said, if you're the son of God, come in these stones to be made into bread. So Jesus had to prove himself that he's the son of God. Is that, is that correct? No, he didn't. You know, when you're the son of I'm Tom Sullivan. Now, don't try to convince me I'm not because I know I am. You'll never convince me. I even got a birth certificate. 
or was I hatched? I don't remember. Anyway, but 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 anyway, I got a certificate that says I'm alive or whatever. Okay. And he answered him, "Devil, you're going to hell in the end of the age, and your your life is going to be over with after the tribulation." No, that's not what he spoke. It's true. Is that, is that a fact? Is the devil going to burn in the lake of fire? That's a fact, right? But is that the word? Yeah, it's a word back in Revelation. Okay? But facts don't do this. Right here, for him to say, hey, you're going to burn in, in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever, that had nothing to do with, him, with, with this temptation with the bread, right? So what do you do when that happens? And he answered him and said, it is written. Moses wrote this. I wonder where Moses got it from. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So Moses was anointed. Where's that found at again? Deuteronomy. In fact, I got it here. Deuteronomy 8.3. In fact, I don't know if they got it up here or not. But anyway, you don't have to put it there. Uh, anyway, that's Deuteronomy 8.3. That's scripture. Moses spoke that in the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament's canon, is that right? It's, it's, it's biblical. It is God's word. See? And this, this is why I'm trying to debunk this thing. Of, well, you know, the Old Testament's a nice story and that kind of thing. And, and the New Testament is the word of God. No, they both are. And boy, we're, I, I'm, see, I saw this more and more and more and more. They, they both are. Then the devil took, whoa, 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 whoa. Why did this devil say something? Hello? Why did he not argue with that? Could he argue with that? Why? Well, why couldn't he? Because it's the word of God. Now you can see anything you want to the devil. Don't go, yeah, whatever. But you, of course, he had, he was speaking out of here. He wasn't speaking out of here. We're going to get into that too. He was speaking out of here. Here's what the scripture says. Mm, the brakes are on. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, there's twice he's challenging him, he's the son of God. Obviously the devil knew who he was, didn't he? Uh, throw yourself down, and for it is written, oh, now the devil's quoting scripture. Oh, oh wow, the devil knows the word of God. Mm. He shall give angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Deuteronomy 6.16. No, no, I'm actually, that's in Psalm 91, I, b I believe. Yeah, so Psalm 91, but then the other part, B, is that yeah, B, and in this part here, in his hands will bear you up, and that's, 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 your foot against the stone. That's 6.16, Deuteronomy, again, quoting Moses. Hmm. Moses has got something going here. And Jesus said, it is written... You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Yeah, that's Deuteronomy 6.16. Again, whoa, whoa, the devil didn't debate that one either. Now, there's two. Three strikes are out. And again, the devil took him up and exceeding the high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to him, all these things I will give you for if you will bow down and worship me, and Jesus said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord our God, and only him shall you serve. Do you realize your worship is service? Your worship is a service. So here we got, hmm, isn't that funny? We got the devil quoting the word of God. You ever know people who could quote the word of God but it didn't work for them? And I hate to say that I, because that sounds mean-spirited. They can quote the word of God but it didn't work for them. I mean, really quote the word of God. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's go back there again. I'm going to show you something that maybe you don't understand about the devil. I'm ripping your cover off. I'm ripping your cover off. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 8. 
And brethren, you've heard this before, haven't you? I came to you, uh, came not unto you with ex ex excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to not know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You know, that's enough to preach on anyway. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That came from the Word, the Word. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age. Who are they? The rulers of this age. The devil? Who are, uh, who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery for the hidden wisdom of God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had not known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now, you ready for this? The devil can quote the word, but he does not have the wisdom of the word. If the devil is so smart like he thinks he is, or he acts like he is, why would he crucify Jesus? Now, let me put it this way. Who crucified Jesus? Well, technically I did, you know, because of my sin. But who crucified Jesus? Was it the religious people, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Are they the ones that went against Jesus? What did Jesus say to those religious people? Your father is the <laughs> devil. Your father is a devil. Now, if the devil can quote scripture, which they could, but didn't have the wisdom of God in those scriptures to enlighten those scriptures, gee, they were doing just what their dad told them to do. Isn't that a fact? So what I'm talking about is stay with the word, but you stay with the, the spirit of the word, of the word coming out of you, out of your spirit, man. Now, of this right here. So the devil, I just unveiled him. He didn't have the wisdom of the word of God. He has, he can quote scripture, but he doesn't have the wisdom of it. And it takes the wisdom of it to work. Here's the scripture. I believe it. And I will not let go of it. I'm going to speak it. And I'm going to speak it. And that's when it happens. You see that? Uh, we can quote to we can quote and understand the word. Well, Mark, Mark, uh, Mark seven fourteen. I'm going to throw that at you here. I'm going to uh, and see. And this is something Jesus told us. He he told his disciples. Seven fourteen. Only got like five more pages to go. Seven fourteen. That's what Jesus said to his to his people. Okay, let's try this again. Mark. Okay, when you're in Luke, that doesn't help at all. Okay. I, I pickle myself a lot. Uh, 714. Here's what Jesus said to his people. And when he had called all of the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. So God's purpose is for us to get into the word and then understand the word of God. Right. Isn't it right? I don't know what that says. Hear the word and understand it. So I'm going to read this again here. Uh, you can quote the word of God and understand the word, Mark 7, 14. Uh, you don't have to perform the word. Just speak it out of your spirit. God does the performance of the word. Understand that? Now let's go to Romans uh, 7. I'm getting my numbers done here. Romans, uh, well, at Romans chapter 10, I know that. Romans chapter 10, 6 to 17. But the righteousness of faith speaks this way. In other words, this is how the righteousness of faith speaks. Faith speaks and it acts, okay? Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. In your mouth, in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, see, that's as far as that guy got. That was it. 
and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you will, will be saved. Not might be, will. God's got guarantees. There's one of them right there. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesses made into salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever, that's me, that's all of us, believes on him will not be put shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I just We just heard that before again, didn't we? I think he's trying to make a point here. How shall they then call on him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? It takes the word of God to get saved. It takes the living word of God to get saved. You see how powerful this is? You see why the devil is trying to keep you out of this book? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? For it is written, how beautiful. Hmm, you can find another scripture. Isaiah 52, verse 7. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings and good things. But they shall, but they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, the Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Lord, give me some revelation about that. Faith comes by hearing, and that word hearing means to hear, and 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 to hear. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In other words, the word of God is the seed to your faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And, uh, oh, yeah, that was, that was do, what I just quoted there is also do, Deuteronomy 30, 14. In fact, I think I'm going to turn to that. I got a couple more hours left here. So I got to. <laughs> no. I could, I could blame God for my humor, but I, I don't want to blame him. Uh, first, uh, Deuteronomy 30, 14. But the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Old Testament again, or former Testament again. You can call it what you want. It doesn't matter. But you see here? In fact, I'm done. I'm done after the next, next, next scripture here. I guess I'll have to tell you my biography or something. No. Uh, Mark 16. Now, I'm going to do some bending here. I want to show you something here. You, you know this scripture. Mark 16, verse 20. And that's all. So I'm going to quote, but I want to show you something. Mark, Mark 16, 20. Uh, it's not going to be on here, I don't think. If you've got your Bible out, anybody have your Bible out? Okay. Uh, whoever got their Bible out, read, read that scripture. Anybody? Mark 16, 20. No, 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 but, but there's something missing here. Go ahead and read it, Donna, because you're going to be my witness here. Go ahead and read that. Okay, now you just read it. It's read up, it's up here also, right? It says here, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Amen. Now, I have... Donna, that them, does that them look funny? Is that funny lettering? So take a look at that word them. Is that different writing? The word them is there. But why is that different writing? What's that called? It's called Dale. That's called italics, is that not? What does italics mean, Dale? You're a teacher in the word. It's not really in the Greek. Why did they put it there, Dale? Translation. 
to help you understand it, correct? Okay. So now, should we take that word them and discount it? No. Should we take that word them and keep it? Here's how we find out. I learned this in Bible school. I'm going to read this scripture, and then I'm going to leave the them out. And I want to show you the, the deep, deepest truth to this. I marked it out myself personally. You don't want to? That's fine. That's great. And the Lord went, went, went out and, pre and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word uh, through the accompanying signs. Amen. Here's how mine reads now. Again, see, them is not canon. You know what canon is? Canon is scripture, inerrant scripture. Now, let's see if this changes this. Stay with the word. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with and confirming the word with signs falling. Obviously, the Lord's working with them. But you know what God was really working with? He was working with and confirming the word. God worked with his word. Yes, obviously, he works with them. But there's a deeper truth here that God works with and confirms the word with signs following. You got that? See, and for myself personally, I mark them out. Them's fine, but them's isn't the best, I don't think. Neither is my, my uh, English either. You see, see what I'm saying? I, them, God did work with them, but he worked with the word, confirming. God worked with and confirming the word with accompanying signs. Every time you speak the word of God, God has something to work with. You don't speak the word. Because he goes by the word. He does something, it's because, here's what the scriptures say. Anybody that, that, that I pray for, man, I quote the word over them, and I say, now listen, when I'm through praying for you, don't you say anything else. You say what this says. Because see, this is truth. Your opinion and how you feel, and, and I understand that point too, we're human. That doesn't matter. What matters is what this says. This is what stopped the devil, as we saw in Matthew chapter 4. That stopped the devil in his tracks. The devil never debated it. Do you notice that? This is why the devil wants to keep us out of the word. He wants to keep us stifled and not use the word. We can rail against him, and I guess that's okay, because that, that didn't affect him. But when you use the word of God on him, you rip him really bad. Because what you're doing is you're using what God uses to change things. It's the word. On my Bible, it says here, New King James Version, Logos, becomes the Rhema. That happened after a miracle happened in this church. We, had a, we have a young lady in our church she doesn't, know, she doesn't know who she is, but she was having problems having a baby. And I got angry, just kind of like I, like I got angry with Pastor Steve and the, the cancer you know, the, uh, on, on his face. I got mad about that real mad, and I told the devil where to go, and it wasn't heaven either. Um, and and then that's the way I talked to him. I heard a woman tell somebody to go there, and I said, you're, you're not a Christian, honey, because nobody wants anybody to go there. I want the devil to go there, and he will. But this woman had problems having a child. And I said, yeah, I started getting mad. I said, Lord, she was a, a little girl. She was a child, but she was a little girl. That's what she's pushing for. And I said, Father, I'm, I'm tired of this. Give me a word. It was only one scripture. One scripture. Give me a word. And the Lord gave me a word out of Exodus. She grabbed hold of that word and believed it, and she had this little girl that runs around in this church. Perfect little girl. Well, she's not like her mother. She's perfect. A, a, a perfect little girl. But you see, it took the word to, to do that. I just got mad. I got mad. You know, I, I didn't get mad, and, and, and I didn't get angry and, and lose my temper. I got mad because this is not right. God's word says that, that she should be able to bear a child. She wants it. Her husband wants it. Let's go for it. Give me a word for this, Lord. 
He could have given it to anybody. But he gave it to me, and I said, here, here's your, uh, by the way, her name is Christina. I don't know if you guys know her or not. But uh, I said, here's the word. She grabbed all that word, and I, I believed, she believed. And even while she was being operated on, is that right? The baby was born normal. For me, Bloomington is the closest I get to being normal. Amen, now, you, now, now, you people who know me, now I'm going to say one more thing. It's not on my notes, and that'll be another hour and a half of talk here. Uh, you who are my students, uh, doctrine. What is doctrine? Well, what do I say doctrine is? You remember? You're not very good students if you don't remember. <laughs> you remember what I said what doctrine is? Anybody? Because for some reason I remember it. Yeah, okay, the word is doctrine. There's one specific thing I'm looking for. I'm, I'm going to show you here. Doctrine is what? Doctrine, of course, is the belief of the church, you know, is what we believe. But real pure doctrine is what? Is it a scripture? Huh? Oh, no, doctrine. Kevin, you remember? What is doctrine? Two or more. You mean you can't go by one scripture? That Really? I guess you could, and it still be doctrine, but how do you know it's doctrine? Because the Bible backs itself up, right? Yeah, this is the last thing I'm going to say here. I want to show you something. I've got it. Uh, I'm going to try to find where this is at. And he knows where I'm going at with this. The people who've heard me teach on this. It's on the doctrine of baptisms. The Bible talks about. Oh. The Bible talks about. Baptism for the dead. Did you know that says it in the Bible? That is in uh, that is in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. I'm trying to find the scripture. I'm going to show you. See this? Is what I mean, we got to be solid in the Word. We got to be solid in the Word. I should I should have wrote that down. Anyway, it's in, it's in uh, chapter fifteen. Uh, they are or they are twenty nine. 1 Corinthians 15, 29. I'm not going to go before this or after this because this would get me in trouble. This would, this would shoot down my doctrine, okay? Or my, my thing here. I'm just going to read 29. That's one scripture, and that's in your Bible. If you've got a Bible, you'll see that it's true. Can you put it? I don't know. Can you guys put it up here? 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 20, 29. 15, 29. Here's what it says. Otherwise. Well, otherwise would be otherwise. Like, Therefore. You find out what it's there for. Well, I don't want you to find out what it's there for because I'm going to show you a doctrine here. Otherwise, why will they do, what uh, What will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? How come we're not doing that? How, how many people in this church baptized for the dead? It's in the Bible. But, but, Find the comp accompanying scripture to that. You can't find it. I've tried. There is a cult that does that because they got the one scripture. The Bible will back itself up. And what Paul was really saying there is, hey, the resurrection is really real. There are people that believe in the resurrection so much that they are even baptized for the dead. He didn't endorse that. But he said there are people that really believe in this. And see, he was letting them know, hey, there is a resurrection of the dead. The people who have died, your, your parents who have died in the faith, they're going to be resurrected. He instilled that in them. But there's out around here somewhere, some, some people are baptizing for the dead. But we don't baptize for the dead because it's one scripture. There's not another scripture there. If you find it, let me know. So to wrap that up, let me put it this way. Stay with the word. But stay with two or three or four or five scriptures to back it up. And I'll tell you what, this is God's deliverance, God's word delivered to you. I don't normally get it this fast. It's always like a slow cooker. This here was a microwave. But I'll tell you what, man, the word is what's, what's going to get us over. The word's going to get us over when I've been in a tight spot. 
I said, God, your word says this, and I believe this, and I'm going to change from this because this is the word of God, and this is what I stand on. I will not move because, God, your word doesn't move. Your word is, is settled forever, the Bible says. Heaven and earth will pass away, which it's not going to, before your word passes away. It's pretty sure. Father, I thank you, God, that your word is so, it's precious. In fact, David said it's more important than my necessary food. Father, I pray for such a conviction on all of us. Lord, you've convicted me even more about being in the word more. Now that I'm retired, I have no excuse to be in the word even more. And God, I thank you for your word. God, may this word that I spoke, not just here, but out on the internet, God, may it set people free to see that the word of God is living and powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Nothing else can do that. And Lord, it cuts. It divides soul from spirit. And Lord, it is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. Thank you, God, that this, this, this hits me all the time. And God, it changes me. It's just a small change, small change, small change, continually small changing to where, Lord, I'm in the right direction. I'm changing, changing to more and more toward your word, so I'm going better and better and better. Thank you, Father, for your word. You left us your bond. God, this is the word of the Lord. This is the established word of the Lord. God, anything that we speak, and it doesn't come to, and does not line up with this right here, that's not the word. This is the word. God, thank you for leaving us this manual. And Lord, I ask you to bless this teaching in Jesus' name. Amen.